Over the last few years, we've had a lot of exciting new research coming out, really redefining how we're looking at polycystic ovarian syndrome, and more importantly, how do we actually treat polycystic ovarian syndrome? And this new shift that we're seeing in the research is moving away from the external, you know, we force the ovary to ovulate and this can happen, to more what's actually going on in the body that's causing someone with polycystic ovarian syndrome to not ovulate, that's causing them to have hirsutism, increased hair growth, that's causing them to gain weight, and even though they're eating a significant hypocaloric diet, exercising, they're definitely in a, a caloric deficient state, but they're still not losing weight. In fact, they're putting more weight on. So what? why are we seeing this kind of a phenomenon, and what can we do about it? So this new research is really empowering for us as healthcare providers, and really ultimately for you as patients, because now we can do more um, than just deal with the external symptoms and really getting down into the root of what's causing this issue and how can we actually help change that so that our body helps work for us, not against us. Because PCOS, um, let's face it, often feels like running a marathon uphill and often talking to a healthcare provider about your PCOS symptoms can feel like talking to a brick wall because you give all the information, you give all the data, and you get the exact same answer each time and it's not working. You're not seeing the changes, you're not feeling any better, so we need to start looking at these underlying issues of what's going on. So what is all this new research pointing at? It's actually, there's one very important variable that seems to connect the new studies that we're seeing on how to improve PCOS symptoms, and it's all related to the gut microbiome. And this goes beyond just PCOS, but specifically for PCOS, we're gonna talk about the summary um, within the frontiers of endocrinology, this new study was published in July of 2022, so very recently, that summarized the available data on how treating the gut microbiome and modifying the gut microbiome can actually help to alleviate a lot of the symptoms of PCOS and can help to actually resume a regular menstrual cycle. So before we jump into this, just to clarify, the gut microbiome issues don't cause PCOS, but if you have PCOS, it can actually worsen the gut microbiome. So we see that the hormonal imbalances that we find most commonly in PCOS, which are increased androgen, testosterone, DHEA, these hormonal changes can actually cause a shift in the gut microbiome to increase the production or the concentration and population of a specific group of bacteria called bacteroides. And we see a decrease in the production of anti-inflammatory bacteria like lactobacillus species, and bifidobacteria. So patients with PCOS, we see generally tend to have what we call lower alpha diversity. That means there's less diversity in the type of species present in the gut microbiome for these patients. And this is problematic because this bacteroides group actually increases things like insulin resistance. It can worsen blood sugar control. It can affect uh, cholesterol levels. So we're seeing that the uh, gut microbiome is really um, sitting at the root and, and at the bottom of this flow chart, or sorry, this bottom of this um, chart of like, what's like, or where is this issue originating from? Where is it being derived from? And we see some very important changes um, in the gut microbiome with conventional PCOS treatments. Um, so for example, um, the use of, of uh, certain probiotics, um, the use of certain um, prebiotics with actual fibers that these bacteria use can help to influence the production of a very important compound or important compounds called short chain fatty acid or SCFAs for short. Short chain fatty acids can actually have a very strong anti-inflammatory effect. We see in the body they actually help to improve blood sugar control, they can help with cholesterol levels, they actually help to um, tighten the tight junctions in the intestinal wall so we have less leaky gut um, that, that we often refer to. Um, and we actually see that these prebiotics and the, the short chain fatty acids that they help to produce can actually strengthen even the blood brain barrier. So we see less inflammation in the nervous system and digestive tract and the immune system of the digestive tract as well. Um, so by improving the short chain fatty acid production in the digestive tract, which we know is already uh, impaired and not working optimally for patients with PCOS can already start to address some of these underlying issues like the insulin sensitivity, helping to normalize uh, testosterone levels, uh, may help with reduction of digestive issues, 
uh, may actually help potentially with mood we see as well as there's less inflammation in the digestive tract and the immune system of the digestive tract and the endocrine tissue we actually see there's higher production of things like 5-hydroxytryptophan which um, if you're familiar with that is actually a precursor for serotonin uh, which is a neurotransmitter that helps us to feel good um, and a very new uh, component of the digestive tract and how we can connect PCOS and the gut microbiome is actually related to bile acids. So bile acids, which are produced in the liver and secreted or, or stored in the uh, gallbladder and secreted into the digestive tract, actually have a very key role in helping to regulate symptoms of PCOS. So just to break it down, to simplify it, um, we have what we call primary bile acids produced in the liver. They go into the digestive tract. Those primary bile acids will actually interact with the gut microbes and produce something called secondary bile acids. And that's where um, it gets really cool with the research. So those secondary, secondary bile acids, excuse me, actually help to produce a very important compound in the immune system called interleukin-22. So we see by increasing secondary bile acids, interleukin-22 goes up. Interleukin-22 or IL-22 for short, has an immense role in reducing inflammation, reducing oxidative stress, helping with insulin sensitivity. And in some animal studies, they've even seen just improving insulin, uh, sorry, interleukin-22, IL-22, we see um, the animal models are actually resuming regular ovulatory and menstrual cycles as well, just by increasing the levels of this interleukin. So we're seeing shifts in the immune system through these bile acids, which helps to support normalizing symptoms from PCOS, such as having regular ovulation, we see reduced testosterone levels, um, and more importantly, we have kind of like a positive feedback loop. So when these, when we make more bile acids, um, it'll actually help to encourage the growth of more bacteria in the digestive tract that signal the liver to produce more bile acids as well. So basically, if we're producing more bile acid or healthy amounts of bile acid, the, the gut microbiome will shift, the healthy bacteria will actually signal the liver, liver to make more bile acids to keep this positive feedback loop going and supporting a healthy gut microbiome. So the bile acids have a very important role. They're actually quite antibacterial, antimicrobial. They help to eliminate a lot of unhealthy microbes in the digestive tract um, that can cause a dysbiosis or an, an irregularity in the microbiome of the digestive tract. So all these things really are just now, you know, we're starting to connect the dots and why certain medications even you know, how are they actually impacting PCOS? Because we see conventional medications, they actually have an effect on the gut microbiome as well. So I always think of it kind of like a car. You know, if the engine isn't working, you can either hire five people to push the car for you every time you need to go to the grocery store, to an appointment, to get to the office, to get back home, or you take it to a mechanic and say, what's wrong with the car? Get it fixed and get things going. So with something like PCOS, yes, we can take something external to help induce ovulation. And this can be fantastic for patients. There are some medications that, you know, you speak with your healthcare provider and before taking anything, obviously, but there are medications that have been shown to improve ovulatory rates, um, live birth rates, clinical pregnancy rates. So, you know, not throwing any shade on them. They're valuable treatments, but also looking at what's going on on the inside, what is actually causing this issue to be present and persistent in the first place. Because if we can do both in conjunction, in my opinion, in my observation that I've seen doing thousands of consults, Patients tend to respond quicker, better, and see the positive outcomes they want a lot sooner. And even things like lifestyle changes. We see how changes in the diet um, with, with PCOS can actually help to encourage the growth of healthy bacteria and exercise as well. You know, when we have this, we talk about exercise, we go back to this old school mentality of we want to exercise so we burn more calories. If we burn more calories than we're taking in, then we're going to start to lose, lose weight or lose fat and have a healthy BMI. But we see exercise goes well beyond the whole caloric ratio and formula really um, exercising we see helps to reduce a lot of the oxidative stress and inflammation that can occur in the digestive tract so just by exercising more regularly you can actually support a healthy gut microbiome reduce inflammation in the immune system and in the endocrine tissue of the digestive tract as well which may have a huge impact on PCOS. But like we you know, cover in this video, it's really not just one piece. When we're talking about a healthy microbiome, there's a lot of pieces to that puzzle. So we're talking about bile acids, prebiotics, probiotics, lifestyle, diet, stress. So we have to find the right balance for each individual patient, which this is where, you know, my, in my experience and my belief is that 
fertility care, PCOS care needs to be tailored personally to each individual patient because no two PCOS patients in my experience are alike. There's always some sort of differences and things that we need to focus more on and helping to find a realistic treatment plan um, that can actually move forward. No more of you know this thing where I see patients come in, they're telling me they're eating 1200 calories a day. It's been two, three years like that and they're still not seeing changes. Like you, you're creating a state that's malnourished, you're not getting results and um, you know it's just not a sustainable way of life. So we need to help find what's sustainable, what's realistic and what's actually efficacious and we can do that by doing the proper blood work to help figure out what's actually going on with the patient. Is there insulin resistance? Are testosterone levels high? Are there increased levels of systemic inflammation? And then starting the, to tailor actual personalized um, treatment plan for you to help address those issues and then monitoring. Are we seeing the changes we're looking for? If we are fantastic, we know we're on the right track and that's one of my favorite uh, follow-up consults when we see patients are actually seeing reduction in inflammation levels and markers of inflammation, lower testosterone levels or normalized testosterone levels, better insulin sensitivity. They're, they often tell me that they'll start to lose weight if they've been struggling to lose weight for a long time without really making any significant you know, change or making heavy uh, following e heavy exercise regimens or protocols you know, that don't require you to be hours at the gym every week. So really, once we start to treat the root cause, everything else just starts to become a little bit easier.